Alright lads, welcome back. Tarts of Iron 4 and the New Order mod as the United States of America. I I tried to record this earlier, however I realised that I had made a mistake in the uh, custom country paths menu. And that mistake was that I had selected the pro OFN candidate to win in the elections in Malaya after we had won the war against the Japanese 25th Army. Now, you may be wondering, why is that a mistake? Well, it turns out if you win the war in Malaya, but then the pro-OFN guy doesn't get elected, that gives a boost to the NPP. And because Malaya does not join the OFN anyway, um, then, you know, it doesn't really matter, though, though I hope they'll still join the, uh, the economics here. Maybe they won't, but I, I need the I need the support. And, and that seems like a good compromise. We still win the war, but perhaps we don't get them in the economic sphere. Um, but I, I'm not quite sure what happens. I haven't uh, tested it yet. But, first of all, I would just like to say thank you to an individual on the TNO Discord named Danny. They gave me some tips on how to get Wallace elected. I uh, I did play ahead until the 1964 election, and including the 1964 election. Funnily enough, I actually won the uh, the popular vote. I think we got 40.8 million votes, and uh, LBJ got 39.5 million. But unfortunately, we lost the electoral college vote, and of course, the electoral college vote is what matters. We had 232, I believe, and LBJ got the rest. Um, I made the mistake of of uh, selecting LBJ as the Democratic or as, as the Republican Democratic candidate instead of Bennett. And uh, Danny on the Discord said that Bennett is the better choice if we're trying to get Wallace elected. It apparently makes a big difference. Hopefully, it's enough to swing. Uh, get us an extra sixty? No, not sixty. Sixty? No, not sixty. Thirty. Thirty-seven. 37 votes, yeah. 232, 269, yeah. Hopefully it'll be not enough to get us an extra 37 votes <laughs> in the Electoral College. Um, because, you know, turnout and all that kind of stuff. Um, hopefully getting... We'll, we'll be doing a bit of min-maxing as well, because now, now I know what to do and what not to do. Uh, I did get a lot of things right, though, which is good. It means there's less, less to be learned, less to adjust. Um... Uh, what else is there? Also, I um, uh, because I had to redo the custom country paths mod. I uh, not not mod, it's fully integrated now. The menu. I didn't redo everything as as I did it um, previously, just with the exception of the uh, the change in Malaya. I, I didn't do much of anything with regards uh, South America, with the exception of Brazil and Colombia. Um, and I think Paraguay, just because I don't want the Natsak popping up there. But, um, yeah, I didn't do anything with regards Argentina, Chile, Peru, anything like that. But that would be about it. Yes. Oh. People, yeah, we're going to have to redo this because um, I didn't do it before I saved. So let us quickly do this. This, of course, will be our first proper episode where we're actually going to get stuff done. Well, we're always getting stuff done, but, you know, actually progress. Shall we, uh, shall we say? Let's get prototype anti air, which for some reason we don't have, even though it's 1962. But I suppose that's kind of like the base game where you start off in the year 1936 and for some reason you don't have 1918 tech research. You know, it's just like, what? Makes no goddamn sense, but what can you do? Oh, that's right. I'm actually going to do all this stuff instead. Now let me quickly check the recording, make sure all is well, just before we start the episode in earnest. Everything seems okay, that is good, onwards we go. Now, free duck, yes, let's get this sorted out, let's um, make all of these small. We'll get two, two lines of dockyards, because I do not care about the navy. Why is it done like that? Random gaps. Not making those. Make ten of these. 
Jesus. Alright, that seems fine to me. We'll put 50 production units on the military and the rest on civilian factories. It's always good to play America. You start off very strong in most mods. Industrially speaking, that is. What folks are we cracking? Yeah, we'll, we'll, um, we'll get stuck into the foreign policy folks. Well, those are the only focuses we can start with. Um, oh, no, no, we can't do that. Yeah. yeah. Now, cracking the steel curtain. Or so, mm, perhaps we should do this. After all, Azel will... Uh, Asia's the more prescient concern because um, we'll, have, we'll get Malaya, then we'll get Madagascar. Um, yeah. Well, Madagascar, I imagine, sits on the African tectonic plate, but you know what I mean. That's general vicinity. And then we'll have to deal with the Philippines, Indonesia. Indonesia's much later, though. Even later in the South African War. That's fine, though. Um, oh, yes, the nukes. And the economy as well. Let's get this sorted too. Silent conservatism. Now, slash, slash, boost. Slash, slash, slash. Nine billion already, that's good. And in the tax hike, we'll be slashing the debt in no time. Oh, that's right though. I'm going to deselect that, because I want to make money, but I don't want to pay off the debt, because we're going to get a mission to move, to improve the economy, and we'll we'll absolutely blow the uh, the debt requirement out of the water, but we won't hit the GDP one. So if we just pile, if we just pile up the money and do nothing with it, then we won't hit the debt one either, and that'll hurt the RDs. And then as soon as the Wallace arrives in, he'll find a bunch of liquid reserves, and he'll, I don't know, slash 50 billion off the debt or something like that. Maybe not 50 yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe even more than 50 billion, actually. Um, right, oh. Also, I haven't responded to every comment yet, I apologize for that. I, uh, I have been enjoying the break nicely. Lots of late nights and late mornings. Oh, yeah, we have a fully mechanized, motorized, armored army. That's what I'm talking about. Great neighbors. I'm going to use some of, some of my uh, field marshals as. Uh, Ready. Actually, what I'm going to do. I'm going to use some of my field marshals as unit commanders. As in, in the general role. That's what I'm going to do. Because they are better. Orders! Basically. Uh, yes, that's all fine. Oh, also, I love the new uh, election mechanic when the uh, the president presidential election thing, where you can see all the states going to you know whichever candidate. That is really cool. Now, begin recruiting a CIA operative. We read this in the last episode, so that's fine. You know, first thing we'll do is we'll go to we'll go five million, just so that it's an even number. There we are. And now we'll bump it up to I think we had it at a billion, so we'll do that. Thousand million. Yeah. Uh, let's start with Africa. Just spent thirty million. That's fine. Can't do anything there yet. I'll actually, just do this right now. Do all the different uh, setting up missions. Oh, we don't have to set up there. That's good. 
suppose we have to set up in Europe, though. I would have thought we would have done that already. Let's do tons of setting up. Don't have to set up in Southeast Asia. Okay. Why do you have to set up in... in Europe, then? Hmm. We can do the strengthen and pro-American sentiment. That'll give us some physical power. Best of luck to them. Uh, can't, restart, can't start researching anything. We never get a, a notification when we can research stuff like that. That's very annoying. I don't like that. Uh, will I just deselect all of this? I won't be doing anything because all of this helps the uh, the RDs, and I don't want to help them naturally. Shockingly. Yeah. Think of. I think I might deselect all of them, but maybe not close just so I can see what new ones pop up. Now, what? Oh, yes, the nukes. Cannot forget the nukes. Apologies for the slow start. I should have done this, but I forgot about it. Nukes. Nuclear. There we are. Decommission all those warheads down to a stockpile of three and a half thousand. Now, anything else to do? How much money could I save here? Damn, that's a lot of money. But it'd be good to get the text. Damn, that's a lot of money, eh? Six billion? Rolling on then. Got the a lovely blue circle straight away. That's not good at all. But one thing I have noticed is though is that um, off camera I had like several really low, uh, low, slow, laggy moments, and in any other mod, not looking at any of them in particular, but Kaiser Redux in particular, they would have crashed on that moment. But TNO didn't. TNO seems to be a very stable mod. That is something that I appreciate greatly. Uh, it's, it's, uh, thinking of Kaiser Redux just makes me sad because it's such it's a mod with such content and such depth and then it just crashes I thought I, uh, oh that's right I must build some add some jet gas that's the right uh, right thing Uh, seems good to me. Ah, yes, of course. I forgot to do the uh, Pan American infrastructure plan. Lots of lovely roads. Let's get the oil first. That's the most important. By God, does America have a lot of it? It's got the good stuff too. It's not. You know, it's better than the stuff coming out of the Caucasus. A lot of the stuff in the Caucasus you couldn't even put into an aircraft as well. The Soviets had to get a lot of their aviation fuel from the uh, from the Allies in the Second World War, the Great Patriotic War. Let's not all the resource-producing provinces first, and then we'll eventually expand to the rest of America. Because, of course, building infrastructure gives you a GDP boost. Uh, multiplier. That's why you should always do it. Damn, I already forgot that. That's a big-ass problem. For resources. Right, let's start with that. Now, smashing the crested wave. Asian opportunities will open up to us. Uh, gets event, uh, Pandas Nehru get, uh, goes to Washington. When he rested a giant's prized cattle for his... We well, already read this. We did. Uh, we read this in the last episode, actually. It was one of the uh, starting icons. I think this is, uh, this is actually a good soundtrack. I like this a lot. He ran many times for president. 64, 68, 72, and 76. That's a lot. 
So yeah, currently um, the Senate is controlled by the RDs. But that that's by the time Wallace gets into power, um, it will be the NPP. Also, funnily enough, um, whenever you have the decision to, you should always go for uh, interventionism. Um, to, try to direct the populace towards interventionism instead of isolationism. I thought the NPP was was kind of isolationist, but kind of thinking about it just a slight bit more deeper, a uh, slight bit, you know, deeply, it kind of makes sense that they were the interventionist. They want to avenge all the American losses. I've been selecting uh, isolationism every time. Even though when you win abroad, the RDs get a boost, Specifically, uh, the Republicans. I think the Democrats only got it once. Um, but yeah, you should still boost interventionism, apparently. According to Danny on the Discord server. Now, problem of logistics. Admiral Thomas H. Moore and the planning staff at Indian Ocean Command wearily eyed the map, splayed across the table the lines and borders outlining the nations of Southeast Asia from the vast Indonesian archipelago to the jungles of Indochina. Yet, for the moment, all eyes were focused, uh, focused on Malaya. Oh, I forgot the Air Force. I forgot the Air Force. I gotta do that, too. And I have production units. Splendid. All of them. Five. Yes. happened last time as well. Yeah. Damn, we got 102 ships in uh, in the Panama Canal. That was a lot. It is the Panama Canal, though. From north to south to east to west, listen and you'll hear the voice of George C. Wallace ringing loud and clear. He's speaking to America. His words are wise and true. And if you really love your country here, what you'll do stand up for america let's vote to keep it free we're about to be destroyed by the great society there's rioting and looting and the cities are being burned how much more will it is that all of them the rest of those uh, just the ICBMs. Think perhaps. Diego Garcia is that under control of Italy? That's Diego Garcia. No, that's the Swiss channels. This one. India. Okay. Shit. Right then. Now, with that done, I'm not going to bother with looking at the Navy. Uh, the what I will do is train up the... Now. <clears throat> Yet for the moment, all eyes were focused on Malay and the task of supplying the rebels on the peninsula. Unless the rebels can secure a port, we can't do much. One of the lieutenants bluntly stated, Thank you, officer, for pointing out the obvious one. Commander snapped back, but we're not in the business of the impossible. We have the perch and old Balao converted for transport duties available. We might be able to Shanghai the sea line for the Atlantic too. Another officer replied, it won't be much, but it's better than nothing. Sea, uh, sea Lan, uh, Venture Day 3rd, pointing at the map of access to the base at uh, 
Tree Comely would uh, be a boon for our ability to reach Southeast Asia. That'll have to go to the, to the State Department. The commander replied, don't count on it. How about Mac Airlift Command? We can try running C-130s out of Cocos Island and use tankers to, re to refuel them midway. We'll have to talk to the Air Force about that. More interjected, they're going to have to do a few trial runs for us, but I agree with the Lieutenant until the Rebels can get their hands on a port. Our hands are tied. New page will be added to the Global Conflicts Decision category. We can now send aid to the United Malayan Anti-Japanese Front, but they cannot send but, but, uh, but we cannot send boots on the ground until they have secured a port. Command Power Plus 15. It's funny you should mention that, because, um, don't they have a port? Like, right at the top? Yeah, it's right here. It's a level 6 naval base. What's the, uh, the issue? That's a lot. You might say, but it's under Japanese blockade. Why would we assume that any other ports, like or like Port Klang, isn't also under Japanese blockade? It's weird. But I accept. Now. The end of the missile crisis. For the past several weeks, the United States has been embroiled in a crisis with Japan. Our former jewel in the Pacific, Hawaii, has been turned into a staging point for Japanese medium-range ballistic missiles, which were discovered by a CIA U-2C spy plane not long ago. After a tense standoff between the USN uh, First Fate and the IJN, Vice President Kennedy approached the Empire with an offer. The United States would remove its own MRBMs from Australia in return for the Japanese doing the same in Hawaii. After several rounds of tense negotiations, this offer was accepted. Uh, despite the urging of the Joint Chiefs, who argued that it was the perfect time to reclaim America's lost territory, the doubles prevailed, and both the uh, sides... Reich's last conquest. And today both sides are moving our missiles. This has been a major diplomatic coup for Kennedy, who is being hailed across the nation as a hero for his actions in the crisis. President Nixon, on the other hand, mostly stayed out of the negotiations and has been widely criticized for such. We've staved off midnight for now. Japanese-American tensions will decrease by 30% by for a total tension of 60%. Now... Well, they have a port. Is it time to get going? Can you get an event about it? I'm your ideology is Bolshevism? Hmm. Echoing cries. As you know, we have been able to secure access to a port. This breakthrough now allows us to actually get some of our American... Bo oh, I think I'd better hold off on playing here and just uh, read this event so we can get volunteers there as quickly as possible. Boys onto the ground over here. Davis took a map off the table in front of him and pinned it onto the wall. As you can see, the route is a pain in the ass to follow and it'll prove to be never an even bigger pain in the ass to actually travel through. But alas, we have to be as careful as possible to avoid interception by the inter uh, the Imperial Japanese Navy or have Sakarno stuff his nose into the matter. A wide grin encompassed Davis's face. He was gleeful at the fact that American boots were finally going to march into Asia and challenge the supremacy of those imperialist Japanese uh, maniacs. You know, General Hafiz, was that your name again? I'm glad we can help you in this battle. The Japanese have blighted my own life. Those fucking bastards sold my children and my wife back in Hawaii. They took everything I treasured so deeply and just ripped them straight from my very hands. Davis' a smile faded and his eyes flooded with tears. He might not have accompanied them on that faithful, uh, fateful day. Yet the screams and cries of poor Marissa and Jack as they, along with their weeping mother, punted out their last breaths of air had continued to haunt him. His brain had betrayed him when it first thought to imagine their fates. I had one child, I mean, he used to play on the dirt and was always a bundle of joy. One day back when those cretins first stormed the place, he had been out playing in the mud as usual. I and my wife, uh, Halima, had tried to get him to go back inside, but he refused, and when the Japanese showed up, he asked a soldier to play with him. The soldier did not even take a second to think before he shot him in cold blood, and I was left frozen at the window, unable to muster the bravery to confront the killer. Staring on as his soul departed his body and his blood stained the ground. That is horrible. Though accurate. The room was silent, uh, empty of the usual grunting of soldiers, the only disturbance being the chirping of crickets. There in the muted hall sat the two men clapped into each other's embrace and weeping a river with their guns in hand. They will avenge their loved ones, even, even if it means their own lives. We can now send volunteers to aid the United Malayan anti-Japanese front in their fight against Japan. Exclamation mark. How many can we send? It was two, I believe. No, oh, that was the wrong one. No, we do not we, we do not want to send uh, aid to the 25th Army. We can only send one. Is it a decision to send more? We're going to send a mechanized division because that also has um, tanks in it. Ready to move. And send Westmoreland. Okay. 
Now, casting off. With the compass in hand and butterflies in stomach, he gazed off towards the visage of Anchorage, rapidly shrinking away into the horizon. A game of cards and a heavy serving of alcohol had certainly done wonders to feed his excitement and wanderlust while they were docked in port, but he had to admit it was hard to get the yesterday's goodbyes out of his mind. His mother's reaction had not surprised him. A quiet bout of sobbing and a laundry list of demands as they stood before the front door. She had been nervous for weeks, and in all that time he had done his best to reassure her this was something he needed to do. He would take all available precautions. He would have all the necessary documents. It was a conversation that seemed to never end. No, he had resolved any lingering strife with Mom. It wasn't her that was spawning such remorse in his sea-bound heart. Surprisingly, it was Dad. To say his father was an enigma would be an understatement. Childhood memories existed beyond count. Uh, missed baseball games. Absent birthday parties. One-word response to kindergarten art pieces. It was not that Dad didn't care at all, per se. From time to time, he would show his affection, teach his son's store, place a flat tire or two. That the problem was consistency or lack thereof. At any moment... Dad might disappear into the basement again, or a car would pull out of the driveway and return hours after family dinner had ended. He never knew what to make of it. Perhaps the war had simply taken too large a toll, created a man who could only function on whiskey and lonesome hours. So when Dad burst into tears in front of the taxi, launched into a bear hug and landed his son a, and handed his son a compass and a pistol subtly before the car door closed, he couldn't help but feel shaken. Was he really making the right decision if it could affect a man uh, such as that so greatly? Ultimately, he brushed the thought away and returned below deck. There was no turning back now, and he had a great and exciting adventure laid out before him. He would return alive and ultimately changed for the better. Time to find out. Uh, time to find what's out there. Russia. Now, Ready, sir. our mechanized division has arrived, the 52nd Argonauts Division. Lag. Move out! Let's follow Move the railroad, out. shall we? Get down there. Let's do this. Instigate local revolts using our connections and the um, United Malay Anti-Japanese Forces Network of Sleeper Agents will arm peasant revolts across the countryside. Now, which one is next? German moon landing. Germany today proudly announced the announced to the world that the German was the first to ever step on the moon. Uh, Eberhard Kollner using a rocket based upon the A9-A10 design from World War II and as a member of a team uh, led by acclaimed scientist Werner von Braun successfully landed along with a team predominantly made up of former Luftwaffe pilots. Uh, Kulner on live television broadcast globally snapped a smart salute to the flag of the realm with the earth visible in the backdrop. A photo which is spread across the globe thanks in no small part to German propaganda. Jubilant celebrations began almost immediately across Germany. Already President Nixon has publicly vowed that the race shall continue that NASA is already making preparations for a permanent human presence upon the moon in the form of a lunar colony. The President announcement was quickly followed by one from Japan who said that they will land on Mars. Despite the President's insistence and that the race is not over, the American public has taken the news poorly. Although America managed to get the first First astronaut into space, public confidence in the space program is at an all-time low, so fewer Americans never look to the night sky with a sense of explorative awe. We begrudgingly congratulate Mr. Colner. Let's get Thomas... Uh, which one's better? Uh, we'll get you, because our players don't give much. Now, we'll, read the, we'll get this one first. Uh, Class 3 Senate election season. The United States is once again gearing up for the election season. As per the Constitution, all the seats in the House of Representatives and a third of the Senate seats will be up for grabs in November, along with innumerable state and local races across the nation, and the course of American politics will change with it. Status quo, radical upheaval, it's time for the people to decide the Republican Dem... Actually, is the House of Representatives even represented in this game? The Senate is, but I don't think the House of Representatives is. I don't remember it being. Um... And the Republican Democrats and then the National Progressive Pact, along with the numerous third parties, are gearing up their political machines across the 50 states with special focus going to those Senate seats up for grabs. Tens of thousands of volunteers, campaign staff and candidates are gearing up to begin their primaries, rallies, whistle-stop tours, public speeches, uh, glad-handing and debates that will dominate the nation's attention for the next few months. Issues of great importance will be debated, candidates will be scrutinized, and eventually millions of voters around the nation will get the chance to make their voices heard, and the greatest democracy in the world will prove, uh, will, will once again prove itself. Keep America strong and free, vote R&D. This is called the cheese strategy. You select the campaign as the RDs, and you do not campaign. 
It's a good strategy. Now, the song seems a bit quiet, so I'm going to bump it up a bit. At least I was planning to until I got the uh, nice blue circle. There we are. Now, we should read... Yes, we'll read this next, next. The end of the missile crisis. The event that has kept the world sitting on the edge of its seat for several months has thankfully finally come to an end today as the United States and Japan have reached agreement over the Hawaiian missile crisis. While the United States Navy First Fleet and the Imperial Japanese Navy have been in standoff around Hawaii for months now, Vice President Kennedy and Prime Minister Eno have agreed that Japan will withdraw its ballistic missiles discovered by a CIA U-2C spy plane from the disputed islands while the United States would remove its own MRBMs from Australia. This has been a massive diplomatic coup from Vice President Kennedy who negotiated the deal uh, while world press has largely criticised Nixon for his lack of action in the negotiations. We've staved off midnight for now. Ah, I see. The uprisings have already happened here. Fantastic. They've taken a singular province, but that is key. If they can take this, that'll be fantastic. How is our division doing? Is it on the way? How long are you taking? Not, not too long, hopefully. How long should we get to final destination? Ah, not sure. Uh... Ah, yes, we're giving access to all this. South America, Red Beach, Lot, Quadros. All that is fantastic. Uh, established contact with the Polish underground state to bolster the Polish resistance and undermine the Germanization project. Sounds good to me. Now, where was I? Assassin strikes at Schickelgruber. News from Germany today is sporadic at best. CIA assets in Germany have reported that shortly after celebrations over the moon landing began to settle, German military units and several platoons worth of the German dictator's various bodyguard units filled the streets. I have to wait until this uh, catches up before I move the event out of the way. Ah, uh, the monthly tick. This may take a while. Tell you what, we'll read this one first. One flew over the cuckoo's nest from the sun-drenched uh, hills, that revenge, revenge-laden neighborhoods, and wild underground uh, economy. Imagine, economists of the Bay Area comes the debut novel of one Ken Kesey. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. It's a bizarre, profane, provocative, and a gauntlet thrown under the under the table of American literature. Inspired by Kesey's work as a psychiatrist, uh, as a psychiatric orderly in uh, is that Menlo, Menlo Park, California. The novel follows one. Randall McMurphy, McMurphy, a veteran of Scotland and a proud street brawler, is sentenced to time in a psychiatric hospital for battery and illicit gambling. There he meets a number of characters, including the novel's narrator, Chief Bromden, and the tyrannical head nurse, Nurse Ratched. Over the course of the novel, McMurphy challenges Ratched's rule, uh, standing up for himself and the other patients in the ward. He is rewarded for this with a lobotomy courtesy of Ratched. The novel ends with uh, Bromden smothering McMurphy in an act of mercy before escaping to freedom. Cuckoo's Nest has already gathered its fair share of accolades and controversy alike. Uh, many are calling it portrayals of America's own authoritarian systems in an age when the nation is supposedly a bastion of liberty in the world. Hollywood star Kirk Douglas is moved to be seeking the adaptation's rights, while schools across America are rumored to be banning it. I'm so crazy, I plan to vote for Cathalver again this November. Now, where was I? Uh, fill the streets and immediately put the city under martial law. From what we are hearing, an assassin which the German claim, with which the Germans claim had belonged to the Japanese uh, Toku Mosuken, I thought it was the Ken 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 Pai Tai Ken Patai, 
attempted to kill the leader, but was stopped in his attempt by one of Shikl Gruber's personal bodyguards and killed on the spot. Already reports... Oh god, Goring is successor. Uh, already reports of several assassinations have surfaced as various politicians in the Realmstag initially believed Shekel Gruber to have been killed and began long-planned plots to eliminate their rivals in the chaos. In the streets, the various military units nearly came to blows as various units ordered one another to stand down and the chain of command broke down. While the situation has begun to recover, martial law is still in effect in Germania and suddenly the realm seems much weaker. In Washington, this raises the question, how can the Germans maintain their new world order when they can hardly handle themselves? As one eagle falls, another rises. No, oh, great ambitions. Let's get working on another focus. Oh, excuse me. Cracking the steel curtain. So this, is the, this is the problem. You're trying to navigate Move out. units, but uh, you're trying to fight wars at the same time. So can I only send the one? Oh, they were sent two last time. Yes, sir. Kind of annoying. Decision for that. I don't think so. All right then. Orders. Hey, we can smash with that. Great ambitions. Orders. Actually, ought to be keep training as well. Uh, Kennedy refocused his eyes and tried his best to keep a smile bright. Not an easy task while shaking the hand of a man with a grip of iron and nerves of steel. And certainly made more difficult with dozens of cameras. <sighs> Lots of lovely events. With cameras flashing in front of the both of them. Uh, while the notion of Ofen A to a rebellion in the sphere wasn't considered impossible, the particular nature of Malaya was always a tricky deal to get anyone outside of the states involved. As the last of the presses... Um, Presses cameras flickered in front of John Kennedy and Tun Abdul Razak. The pair could finally take a seat and talk over America's involvement in Malaya. Razak uh, was speaking before he even sat down. Mr. Vice President, we both know that the OFN needs a firm position in the Pacific. An ally to lean on should push come to solve. It would just send some more supplies our way. Or if you would just send some more supplies our way. Kennedy Grimson spoke up. We're doing everything we can with our airdrops and we're pushing our luck as it as is. If so much as another gun passes into Malaya, the Japanese will catch wind and we'll have a whole new situation on our hands. Yeah, as if they don't know. Uh, Tun's eyebrows narrowed and he locked his fingers together. Nothing that you couldn't handle though, right? Kennedy smirked and took a sip of water. I'm serious, Tun continue. We both know what your next step is. One way or another, it's a chance to redeem America's position in the cause of world freedom. It's not like President Nixon is exactly hurting those chances with how he's managed your country. And with how you, um... Don't you mean helping? And with how you handled the Japanese before, I'm certain it'll be on the chief's seat in no time. Kennedy took a moment to think about Tun's words. Maybe we can give a little more to Malay. I hate to see anyone's culture ground up to nothing after all. But don't count on anything more than what uh, than what you're already getting. I'll run it by the president and see what he thinks. Just don't count on it. Physical power plus 30, a return to normality in a sea of hostility. Am I really only really send the one volunteer? Why is that the case? That's annoying. Uh, Birmingham next. Bingham. The civil rights movement is reaching its crescendo. All across America there are protests, uh, rallies and riots hosted by civil rights activists and they got worse by the month. Just this week a massive march was held in Birmingham, Alabama. The heat, uh, the heat, the heart of the segregation, it is hot. The heart of the segregation is south with tens of thousands of activists. Ready. Uh, the heart of the segregation is south with tens of thousands of activists, white and black alike, calling for equal rights. I'll do this. Uh, although it started civil, local police chief Eugene Bull Connor quickly deployed riot police 
uh, and set dogs loose on the protesters. The peaceful march quickly turned into a running battle in the streets between peaceful uh, between police and activists. This event, oh shit! I missed it. It'd be fine. I, I think it just uh, voters trend more liberal uh, over a course of uh, a certain amount of time, and then we then we get a counter event where they trend more conservative. So it's all good. Now we'll do this. Send a weapons and explosives to the insurrectionist insurrection eh, get to the insurrectionist forces in Serbia to destabilize German public government and weaken their German garrison. Operation Charity. We're going for the Technics. next now Pandis Nehru goes to Washington Washington AP President Richard Nixon met with Indian Prime Minister uh, Jawaharlal Jawaharlal Nehru at the White House today the meeting the first between Nixon and Nehru was the first stop of the Prime Minister's visit to the United States soon to be followed by multiple stops in Washington, Virginia, and New York. At the Oval Office, President Nixon reaffirmed America's commitment to uh, deepening America's political and economic ties to India. Ah, yes, here's the counter-protest. India is a vast nation, blessed with a multitude of resources and a rising population. It is the belief of this administration that the United States of America would be foolish if we did not embrace our republic and all the opportunities that, that it offers the world. Following the President's remarks, Prime Minister Nehru returned with cordiality of his own. The people of India are on the verge of great success in the fields of economic, societal progress and national development. We wish to use the success to join hands with the free world and I would like to thank the President for his efforts to bring our nations closer together. What's next? Hamburgers in Bombay. Not likely. Uh, oh, sure. Oh, that's a problem. God damn it. Now I have to reload. Ah, uh, the thing, the mouse slipped over it and. And it clicked it. God damn it. That's a bigger problem. Now, let us try that again. Uh, this event has been widely televised across the nation, with average Americans shocked by the police brutality on display in Birmingham. Many of the more liberal news sources across the United States have likened the events in Alabama to those in Germany decades ago, citing police brutality and the suppression of activists to draw parallels with the Nazi regime. Worrying. All voters will trend more liberal on the issue of civil rights over the span of two weeks. One floor of the cookies nest. Not just like that boom, all the events are gone, but don't worry. More will be here soon. During a successor. The Japanese, when they see the M60 patterns roll up. Counter protest in Birmingham. One week ago, civil rights activists held a protest in Birmingham, Alabama, that quickly devolved into a riot. Now, tens of thousands of people opposed to the civil rights movement have staged a counter march waving the flags of the Confederacy, their home state, and even a few Hackenkreuzes. In comparison to the previous week, the police chief didn't even bother deploying more than a few lightly equipped beat cops, uh, several of which joined in the protest. Furthermore, there are reports that pro civil rights activists attempting to flock to Birmingham to continue the movement have been driven out, by, uh, driven out of the city by police and locals alike, with several would be protesters returning home battered and bruised. With the rising violence in Birmingham and elsewhere, Vice President Kennedy has reportedly convinced President Nixon to consider federalizing the Alabama National Guard and deploying it to restore order in the state. Even more worrying. All voters will trend more conservative on the issue of civil rights over the span of two weeks. It's kind of cancelling out the first thing, really. And why all voters? That makes no sense. Suddenly, black people will become pro-segregation. Oh, there, there was um, 
the Nation of Islam sect that, that was a fan of segregation and creating a carving a black state out of America in the South. Uh, Practice seal curtain. There we are. Now, an innocent question of geography, Mrs. Denson. Why is there a big empty space on the map? The grade A teacher looked towards the big wall map that the young girl was pointing to and the large grey space in Eurasia that Mrs. Uh, Denson remembered being coloured red for the Soviet Union when she was in school 30 years before but now labelled a Russian anarchy. If you looked into an atlas, uh, cartographers would have tried to outline where the biggest warlord groups were but that changed every year. Sometimes over a week as one group would rise in power and another declined. She didn't envy that, uh, that thankless, never-ending job. Well, Mary, that, that is where Russia used to be, Mrs. Denson replied. Why isn't there a Russia anymore? It's complicated, Mrs. Denson replied, before flipping open her book to continue talking with the curriculum-mandated discussion of Manifest Destiny. But isn't that history? And we are in a history class, Mary asked again. Mrs. Denson said, okay, short version from what I know. The Germans defeated the Soviet Union in the war, but, it didn't, but didn't take over the whole country, leaving the rest to be fought over. Some are communists, like in the uh, Soviet Union, while, while others want to bring back the old empire, and others want to be democratic, like us here in America, she said. Now, if you can turn to, why can't they just all get together and beat up the Germans? Andrew asked. Batov moment. I bet my dad would join the army to kick Germany's ass again. Andrew, that's not a good word to use. Mrs. Denson admonished, but by now the whole class was talking more appropriately, yelling about how their dad or brother or they themselves would work with a unified rush to beat up Germany again, totally derailing the class-based kids. Mrs. Denson sided with the bell rang a moment later, hopefully ending the talk about the sad, sad story of Russia for now. Class dismissed. Now, Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech. I say to you, my friends, that in spite of the difficulties and frustrations of the moment, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit uh, down together at the table of brotherhood. Uh, I have a dream that one day even the state of Mississippi, a desert state sweltering with the heat of injustice and oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the colour of their skin but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. On the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, prominent civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. gave a speech to a grand crowd of over 250,000 people. His words have already spread across the country like wildfire as men and women, black and white alike, spread a new slogan, I have a dream. The time for action is now. United States of America completes focus they have a dream. There's no, uh, there's no one more tolerant than us in Washington. Let's start by saying that. We've had many great, great conversations with all sorts of black fellows from around the nation. We've won a majority of black voters in every election we've run. Sure, Kennedy got points with the press after calling Mr. King in his jail cell in 60. And sure, Mr. King has called us a moral card for not doing the same. Um, but we don't let that bother us. No, we respect people's right uh, to run their goddamn mouths off whenever they want. But never mind that. It seems that the King fellow has come to Washington for a march of some kind or another and delivered a speech that has the nation all up in arms. Senators keep calling us to ask us to finally make a decision on the civil rights business. We could do that and ruin our coalition. Or perhaps we could find some way to stall for time. We shall now use our political power to increase our uh, consumer goods requirements, that which will boost our GDP growth. And do a tax hike. Yeah, we're short five political power. Hang on for it. Now, a tale of two cities. The Olympic Committee was a far more brutal affair than what most people believed. The entire work battled, uh, the entire world battled for the chance in the spotlight for just a uh, for just a pair of weeks. But of course, most of the competitors were mere fluff. For the two contenders had already been narrowed down to two. Man, how are we losing? Taking cover. There's two military divisions. Move out. 
got to come here. Um, <clears throat> Detroit and Mexico City was the final decision, and both their champions were here to represent us. In the American corner laid car manufacturing joint and governor of Michigan, George Romney, and on the Mexican corner laid none other than the president himself, Lopez Mateos. Or Mateos. Mr. President, it is a pleasure to meet you here at Romney. Greeted his Mexican rival with a firm handshake. Mateos, his transgender, was kind enough to begin his work as best he could. Governor Romney, I've heard a lot about you these past days, or perhaps it would be best to say I've heard quite a lot about Detroit. The President's Oak, with his emblematic wide, white smile plastered on his face. Romney seemed a little less thrilled about it. I've heard quite a lot about Mexico City as well, if I'm honest. I've heard quite the troubling things. Are you sure uh, that the Olympics being held there would be safe for the athletes? I've heard about the attitude. Is that, is that the. Oh, that says altitude, no About the altitude. Romney tried his best to explain himself, but the transit didn't let him finish before filling in Mateo's report that had said that the often jovial face of the president shifted into the opposite of one a second after every head in the packed room turned to see the source of the loudest shouting match heard in the last few days. Romney, Mateos, and the transitors threw flurries of insults that the opposite party never fully understood, as if they couldn't run out of breath. It took well over a minute before both men tired of not getting what the other said, and walked away the smoke leaving through their ears. Gentlemen, you can't fight in here. The shame that they, didn't, that, they uh, that that fight wasn't in the war room, because then I could say no fighting in the war room. But no, it was not. Aha! Easy dubs. God damn it, I'm The MVP runs a lackluster, uh, lack, lackluster, lackluster campaign in the Central East Coast. According to our people on the ground, the most recent MVP regional campaign could be best be described as mediocre. Um, their PACs and... What does PACs stand for again? And campaign organizations have been underperforming. While their candidates have, dry, have lagged on the polls and attract relatively little enthusiasm, depending on our fortunes, they may still have a chance, but their recent difficulties certainly bode well for us in November. Fingers crossed. Operation success, good. Move out. Still can only send the one division. Why, why am I only able to send one? I was able to send two off camera. It's curious. Huh. Now cracking the steel curtain. We can only hope to defeat Germany by dismantling her sphere. In the war's aftermath, Germania drew a line hugging the stretch of Europe's coast between Norway's fjords and the Strait of Gibraltar. Along its length rose a string of watchtower seawalls and concertina wire. They're seems held together by trillions of realms, marks, and the uh, leader's uh, Germanic will. Move out! Uh, the stranglehold over the old world goes by deceptive names like the Einheits Pact and Fortress Europa. The free world calls it, calls it for what it is, a steel curtain. The Volkshalle would... Um the... Volkshalle would have one believe that the sealed curtain is impregnable, insurmountable, everlasting. In truth, the curtain is pregnant with rot, surmount, uh, surmounted by power struggles and frail on its deathbed, much like its architect Schickelgruber. Subtle blows can make gaps out of its rustiest sections. Their liberties torchlight can filter back into the continent afresh. That's a very descriptive. I like that a lot. German spy arrested. According to his landlord, Joseph Greenberg was a rather unassuming fellow. He paid his rent on time, never had any noise complaints, and always helped Miss old Mrs. Connors carry her groceries upstairs. Uh, in reality, this vlog, oh, this, yeah, this was all a cover. Something the landlord learned when she opened Greenberg's empty apartment at the site of piles of surveillance equipment and folders with uh, hacking uh, stamped upon them. Thinking quickly, she called the police, who in turn informed the FBI and arrested Greenberg this morning as he left for work. I kind of... Wait, wait so he was finished in the apartment, but he didn't take any of that stuff out. That thing is rather sloppy. Joseph Greenberg was revealed to actually be Joseph Hansen, an agent for the German Abwehr, ironically disguised as a Jewish American. His mission was to secure a job at Bell Telephone, study their communications infrastructure, and identify flaws with the installation of wiretap and other espionage methods. Even more concerning was that his phone book had the telephone number of several local MPP politicians inside, and it seemed he was trying to contact the Pact's fringe elements, including the bundle of sixes agitator Francis Parker Yockey. Charges for violation of the Espionage Act are already being brought against him. Though he will likely end up simply being deported back to Germany rather than facing a long prison term in the United States. That's one less Nats up to worry about. Did, or did she just go in there for the sake of going in there? Now, cracking Fortress Europe. 
President Nixon stared at the world map projected onto a screen. Uh, in the White House briefing room at the center was American circle facing the Japanese and their colonial minions to the west and the Germans and their slave empire to the east. But where the Japanese and the Americans have only recently escaped Armageddon's embrace in Hawaii. Uh, the Natsak Empire was fraying, and it seems Shikul Gruber grew older and more informed by the date. No amount of clever uh, camera work and pre recorded speeches could hide his cracking gait, creaking gait. His once mesmerizing oratory shrunken into senile rambling. Germany's moon landing was not a triumph, it was an epitaph. Secretary of Defense Marvin Laird looked up from the latest CIA intelligence brief on the German realm. It's a house of cards, Mr. President. Britain chafes under a foreign occupier. The French government can't keep the country together. The Norwegians continue to resist decades of occupation. Their African colonies will wither on the vine without support. All held together by a man who can't finish the sentence without forgetting how it started. Nixon knows that. Ah, there's no world leader like that today. When Chickle Gruber goes, his successors will fall over themselves to split the spoils like Alexander's generals did and, and did in antiquity. Laird handed over a sheaf of documents from the CIA folder. It's the opportunity of a lifetime. We'll certainly, uh, we'll, or we'll, we'll, uh, we'll never get another shot at crippling the Nats like this. It's time to go back to the old world. I was hoping to encircle them, but they seem to just be falling back under the weight of the United Malayan Anti-Japanese Forces. A house divided against itself cannot stand. I believe this government cannot endure permanently. Half slave and half free. I do not expect the union to be dissolved. I do not expect the house to fall, but I do expect it will, be, it will cease to be divided. It will become all one thing or all the other. Now there seems to be fairly weak. We can get that argument there. Abraham Lincoln. Though the institution of slavery was torn down at the end of the Civil War by the 13th Amendment, a failed reconstruction and decades of Jim Crow ensured that the issue of race would not or could not be solved. As he divided things, the Republican-Democratic coalition grew in debates um, turned to, turn to, uh, turning to fights and friends turning to enemies. The truth only became only becomes clearer and clearer. The coalition, as it stands, cannot be saved. Yet there is still time to act. America must once again reckon with its issues of race, be it through words or war. You can only pray for less blood to be shed this time around, for the fate of the world rests upon this near-divided house. Can't you two just play nice? Now that's it, so America completes focus, the coalition sequence. Falls updated. Fantastic. Now the man with a plan. Michigan had seen plenty of men with big ideas come and go as the bastion of Amer mighty American automobile industry. The state had a natural attraction for men with dreams of changing the world, deterred by the power of the labor unions uh, or the big three automobile companies. Many of these men had failed and remained in obscurity. George Romney was not one of these men. The president of the American. Motors Corporation Romney had saved the Marbon company through economizing on a bold new strategy of focusing on the sales of kind of a miserable campaign. They haven't been doing well so far, the MPP. Isn't there a German word for this a German word for this feeling? Yes, Schadenfreude, I believe, is the one they're referencing. Not content with his uh, rescuing the company. Uh, Romney had continued his adventures into Michigan politics. At the head of the Citizen Crusade, Romney and his allies had managed to challenge the RDC monopoly in Michigan. Uh, their efforts forced a state constitutional convention and a rewriting of the state's governing documents to be more efficient and protective of citizens' rights. This effort had attracted the support of many in Michigan, including the NPP, even as it challenged the established powers of the state. In spite of his clash with the RDC in entering politics, Romney had no interest in joining the NPP. The Michigan branch of the party was filled with birchers whose anti-establishment radicalism and bigotry uh, repelled the upstanding Mormon. Uh, Romney had no time for extremism in, the, in his approach to problems and said searching for a consensus approach that would actually solve problems. And what's all this talk of cooperative, competitive capitalism? Oh, the other America. What can I do here? Nothing Borders! Much. Cut off that division, that would be nice. Uh, many residents of post-war Europe often heard stories about life in the promising United States. Children listened intently as their grandparents spoke of immigrants going from rags to riches within a few years of their arrival. 
Seeing how the fatherland neglected to print stories about life in the United States citizens under the jackboot code could only rely on their relatives on an accurate portrayal, it was uncommon for foreigners to, to contemplate whether there truly is poverty in the promised land of America. Michael Harrington's novel The Other America debuted in bookstores across the country today. The novel discusses the issues of poverty in the United States and exposes readers to the significant number of Americans living below the poverty line. Harrington claims that many poor residents live in social isolation or uh, and are not, com not commonly seen by the middle and upper classes. He calls for politicians to take immediate and re uh, remedial action to rid the country of every aspect of poverty. Critics of the novel disagree with Harrington's socialist tendencies, but most readers agree with the call to action. The book has already gained influence on a number of politicians in the capital who want to create a better country for every citizen, rich or poor. Economists are already devising ways to make education and healthcare more accessible in the country. America's biggest misconception debunked. Splendid. Any volunteers I can see? Is there a decision for I guess not. Curious. How is the uh, denuclearization going? We should have dismantled 4,000 nukes so far? Something like that? Maybe? Maybe? Hmm. Three? Three? Three thousand? <coughs> oh, looks go, like we go, might go. actually get this in circle. That would be nice. Family dinner. The Dirksen Building's cafeteria was a common haunt for senators on lunch break. Today they would have played host to a most pre uh, prestigious pair. Uh, Vice President John Fitzgerald Kennedy sat thoughtfully chewing on a turkey sandwich. Opposite him, a, uh, opposite him sat a smiling man who the coalition registry knew as a Democratic senator, but who John had always... Oh, assassination attempt. Had always known as his brother. It's been too long since we've taken time to ourselves, said John with a smile. How are you, Bobby? Ethel, uh, still taking good care of you, I hope. Robert Francis Kennedy laughed at the, pray at the playful wink his brother gave him. I can hardly complain on the home life, Jack. His grin faded. Still, uh, current events haven't exactly been great for my sleep. The older... Ooh, we did get the encirclement. Splendid. Um, the older Kennedy nodded sympathetically. The violence is getting worse for sure. He frowned. Nixon being a stick in the mud about it about uh, is, isn't helping things either. He still won't endorse any legislation on the matter. Can't you do something about it as long as the president sits on the fence? Things will only get worse. I'd love to, but you know how Nixon is. Muttered John, idly stirring... His coffee, knowing him, he'd probably just veto whatever you put in front of him and yell at us for fracturing coalition unity. But this is far more important than coalition unity, Jack. There are millions of Americans, billions of good, honest people being cast aside for things that are far beyond their control. The longer we wait, the greater their suffering will be. Fixing his brother with an intense but encouraging look, he continued, you're the vice president. Uh, at the very least, you can use your vote, your voice, in the name of those who have no voice. John was silent for a moment, then he smiled. You've always been a good man, Bobby. You're right. Of course, I must act. Family matters. Loreano Gomez dies. Bogota. Ah, that's, that's uh, Colombian. So goes the despot of Colombia. Yes, we are backing the uh, Colombian Revolutionary Union. They're the pro FN guys. Left wing populism. Uh, yes, here we are. Making good progress in Malaya, too. First meeting. Ha, ah, Phyllis Schlafly. No. Schlafly? Schla Schlafly? Schla Schlafly. Schlafly. A senior member of the National Federation of Republican Women went to meet with President Richard Milhouse Nixon, uh, effectively the most senior grandee of our party. She expected frank and respectful discussion, but for some reason the meeting was completely unsatisfactory. Perhaps it was the fact that the delegation had as its aim to attempt to convince the president. Let them have it. Uh, not to bother with proxy wars in Malay and the Philippines when the real concern was domestic communist and fascist infiltration. Unbeknownst to Schlafly at that time, Senator Barry Goldwater had made... Move out! ...had made such points in Nixon's face recently since Nixon already hated the senator from Arizona made sense that he would outright dismiss people, especially women that repeated Goldwater's words. It could just as well have been Nixon's nature. The president was distracted and indifferent to anything that any of the women said. Uh... He could not open his own mouth without saying something ungentlemanly and dismissive. Looking at Shafley, all he had to say in response to her words was, What's an attractive woman like you doing wasting your time out here? The other woman looked at each other the other women looked at each other with no small amount of disgust. Shafley was not as free and easy with her reactions as her colleagues were. She knew she was she had a god given duty to pay due respect to the President of the United States, but that did not stop uh, stop her sharing their disgust in the quiet of her own mind. Uh, are we breaking through there? Oh, I didn't read the previous one. I think I did. Yeah. The Forgotten Allies. 
The old Entente assumed the German people had learned love of peace in the Great War. They also assumed the German government had, had held true to, to its promises thereafter. Moreover, they assumed the German army had no business prevailing against the combined forces of two world empires and that they would fold in a second war as they had in the first. Germany proved them wrong on all three accounts by raising the hacking prices over Paris and London. On that ignoble climax has America since been forced to leave its allies' governments to Schickel Gruber's mercy. Operative Ward says that this says the CIA governments uh, with an appropriately sized black budget the Allies the rest of peoples will be forgotten no longer. Gain base stability plus 1% and base conflict score plus 2%. The decisions to aid our forgotten allies will be unlocked. Fantastic. It's immediate set, immediately sent some guns to the Mounties and also the resistance. Operation Tuku. The resistance will be more prepared to launch a two if need be. Ah, huh, successful immediately. But all right lads, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know we didn't exactly get much, much progression done, but we got through quite a lot of events. I shall see you in the next episode where we shall continue our wars in Malaysia. Where else will we go? Perhaps Madagascar? No, that, that might be the episode after next. Either way, we shall continue. And the MPP shall grow in popularity. See you then.